The amount of international minimizing of the atrocities committed by Hamas and almost celebration using the paragliders that descended on uh, that music festival where 260 people were killed, many of whom were teenagers and young adults, uh, many of whom were tourists, international, um, you know, foreign nationals. The celebration of these murderous Hamas paragliders and co-opting this image for poster art done by Black Lives Matter organizations in the United States, distributed on college campuses all over America, has been so disturbing to watch. I mean, I live in New York City and watching people congregate in Times Square and making horribly anti-Semitic comments, these cheers and jeers, some of these tweets that we're seeing. And I sort of trust people to be their worst selves on the internet. But you see many people, many ultra ultra online leftist uh, academics saying things along the lines, trying to map all of this onto this very simplistic colonizer, um, oppressed narrative. Uh, you know, this one tweet, I think, is so emblematic of this mindset. What did y'all think decolonization meant? Vibes, papers, essays, losers. Um, and it's like, well, wait a second. Like, you could reasonably oppose the actions of the state of Israel and you could oppose the way that they're leveling um, so much of Gaza while still saying that the instigating attack, what Hamas did of putting bullet holes into children, into babies uh, and executing grandmothers in front of their families, abducting people, you know, there there's a little bit of misinformation sort of floating around and it's hard to suss out the extent to which rape was used, uh, especially on some of the uh, women who were abducted from that music festival, the degree to which, you know, peaceful kibbutzes had, you know, all kinds of slaughter. And, and I mean, these are highly trusting communities where generally speaking, you're prepared for air raids, but not on the ground attacks. You had, you know, neighbors watching their, their neighbors and family members being murdered. I just, the amount of totally ignorant if not outright evil vitriol we are seeing spewed from so many corners of the American progressive left has been highly disturbing to watch. And I do, I'm curious about whether we're seeing a little bit of this watershed moment, a little bit of a reckoning where there's a sense of like, well, wait a second, weren't you the same people on college campuses complaining about microaggressions and asking to be taken into a safe space? And like, how do you think this makes Jewish students on these university campuses feel when you are acting like, these paragliders should be using your little Canva graphic design template. I mean, it's, it's pretty despicable to I me. Mean, also, the left has been so quick to, you know, to call everybody Nazis. Yeah. You know? uh, what is you this, know, right? You, you, right. And, 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 now, and now we see the largest mass killing of Jews literally since the Holocaust. And they're coming out and marching um, for them, for yeah. on the side um, of the perpetrators. Uh, what what typically happens when a group uses, you know, carnage against civilians in such an overwhelming way is it not only reduces the likelihood of government concessions, but it does tend to reduce um, international support. But in the case of the Palestinians, um, we're not seeing the standard um, international effect. It's very hard to imagine a bloodletting like this happening somewhere else in the world. And, you know, so many people all over the place in America and Europe and Australia, et cetera, um, you know, holding up signs and saying that this is justified and that this this is actually good. And maybe we should see uh, even more of it. Um, so uh, that this has been, you know, a secondary, very disturbing aspect of the yeah. October 7th terrorist rampage. Yeah, and I think Liz is right to say that there's the sort of simplistic oppressor, oppressed lens that so many of these activists have been acclimated to seeing everything through. And there's just this sort of reflexive, oh, Palestine, uh, no matter what the facts on the ground are, that's that's the side that we need to you know align with. Uh, before we wrap you this know, up- you know yeah. Can I say one Go more ahead, thing? You know, yeah. just as how just as how governments sometimes support, you know, terrorist groups and they think that it will serve them well somehow, and then it ends up sort of backfiring against the government. These problems that we're seeing, you know, who's implicated in them is actually the administrations at a lot of these universities, where yeah. they hired 
faculty, um, which contributed to the radicalization um, of the students. And they also built up these big DEI offices, which in, frankly, in many cases, and this is objectively true based on data, um, that more often than not, they're actually anti-Semitic. They don't even really view Jews as a minority group worth protecting. Um, yeah. And what's happened is we've seen a radicalization of the youth in this country, particularly at the universities. And this could get out of control in a way that the administrations will regret. But make no mistake, it's not a coincidence that the radicalization um, is happening at a lot of these universities. And I think that the um, administrations are largely responsible for it, even if they come to regret that stance of theirs over the last few years. I mean, it's just objectively true that Hamas's tactics in, in many ways looked absolutely as evil and barbaric as ISIS tactics. Um, I've looked. I've looked at the pictures of. I can verify them. Like the the pictures of the burned babies and going house to house and shooting um, families. And this would you would think that this might be a bridge too far for a lot of people. That even if they support the Palestinian cause, they would be repulsed by this level of violence. You never saw big celebrations around the world after ISIS, you know, burnings and shootings and beheadings. You didn't see that out of Australia or across cities in, in America or, or in Europe. But you do see a celebration of the violence of Hamas. And so Hamas is more popular, even around the world, than ISIS ever was. And it's somehow seen as more acceptable to celebrate Hamas violence around the world than it ever was to celebrate ISIS violence. You know, you do not have to go far from where I live, or probably from where either of you might be, to find gatherings of highly activated, uh, you know, uh, upset activists who hold signs which, in many cases, are lauding not only the cause of the Palestinian resistance, but even the very disgusting tactics against Israeli citizens. On top of that, we know that, according to the latest number I saw, Hamas killed internationals. Hamas yeah. killed 22 Americans and has an untold number of American hostages. And America is not alone. These aren't just, just you know, American Israeli citizens. These are um, foreigners from, from Asia, for example, um, where they were killed in, in, in numbers. Um, yeah. And so, and again, the Hamas attack is being applauded by Al Qaeda. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our conversation with Max Abrams about Hamas's attack on Israel. For another clip, click here. For the full conversation, click here.